In this video, we will demonstrate using the simple BGA pin report type as an input to the CAD Enhanced Part Builder tool. This is the format where the pin names are provided in a row column format like in many data sheets. In these cases, pin types are not in the spreadsheet, so we will have to define the pin types interactively in the Pin Explorer. We are using the PEX8616 PCIe switch from Broadcom for this example. It comes in a 324 pin BGA and if we look at the page 76 of the data sheet we can see that the pins are provided in a simple row column table which Part Builder can read if we provide it as a .csv file. For the first step we will use the free online tool at https online to pdf.com slash pdf to excel to convert this PDF page to a spreadsheet. Then we will need to clean up the spreadsheet a bit to make it to conform to what Part Builder expects in the simple BGA format. To get the process started, we open the online PDF to Excel tool. I am using a stored bookmark in Chrome. And then we drag the PDF to convert onto the web page. Then we use the scissors icon, which lets us tell the tool that we only want page 76 of the PDF converted. The row column table for some larger BGA devices may span multiple pages of the PDF, so we would have to t let the tool know which pages we want. The conversion can take a little bit of time, on the order of minutes, and once it's finished we will be prompted to download the spreadsheet. After we download the spreadsheet, we need to make some fixes. We can see that the column numbers 1 to 18 are actually all in one cell and we need to fix that. We also have to enable editing because it came from an online source. So we delete the, the cell with the 1 to 18 and then put one number in each cell across the top to match the pin name entries. I put a 1 in cell A5, then add a formula equals A5 plus 1 in column B5 and then I copy that formula across the rest of the cells. We also delete the unused header rows and then insert a new column to make a place for the row letters. Now we enter the row letters manually in the empty A column we created in the last step. We want to match what we see in the PDF, being sure to use the sparse BGA alphabet A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, J, K, L, M, N, P, R, T, U, V. There's no I, O, or S. And then we remove all the other rows below the row of pin names. Once we fix the spreadsheet, we need to save the file as a CSV file. Here we use the Excel macros provided with the CAD Enhanced tool distribution to do this. The benefit of these macros is that they create the CSV file in the local directory and use the name of the tab as the file name. So we name the tab PEX8616 underscore pinout and then the macro will create the PEX8616 pinout.csv file for us in the same directory we are working in. A separate video will be provided to detail how to install the CAD Enhanced macros in Excel for easy use. Now we are ready to use the simple BGA spreadsheet in Part Builder. We open the tool and use the Create New Part function to build a new folder under the C colon CAD Enhanced work there, and it will be named after our part number PEX8616. We choose the simple BGA type from the pin report type pulldown, and then we browse to find the PEX8616 pinout.csv file that we created, and we use the prompt to copy the file locally.
Next, we use the read pin report operation and see that Part Builder finds 324 pins. We also notice that it complains that there are many pins with undefined pin types. This is expected in the simple VGA flow because no pin types have been provided in the table. We will need to open the Pin Explorer and interactively select pin types for the undefined pins. The Pin Explorer GUI has been updated in the latest version of the tool to add more functionality locally. We can now enter the diff pair search rules and rename rules here, and the filters have been reorganized to fit better. First, we will look to see if we want to rename any pins. Pin type assignments happen after the rename function, so it makes sense to set up our rename rules first. We set up simple rename rules to rename the n slash c pins to nc, and we change the hashtag or pound sign to underscore n. Once we enter these rules in the rename rule entry, we can use the update pin list button to refresh the pins and show the results of our renaming rules. Next, we attack the pin type assignments. With the powerful pattern matches, we can quickly define pin types for a large number of pins with one match. For instance, we enter the PET pin name match, select the output pin type, and then use the assign type to matching pins button to tell Part Builder that any pin containing PET should be an output. That one match takes care of 32 pins for us. In a similar fashion, we enter the PER match and set those pins to inputs and set the GPIO match to use in-out types. We hit the Save Type Assignments button to save the matching rules to the pin type override.txt file. We should do this often as we create the rules. We can set all the pins that match strap to inputs and then go back through the PDF table to find the handful of strap pins that are output or in-out pins. Here we can use the interactive right-click to set the pin type for these special pins. This will create a more specific rule that will be used instead of the shorter strap rule for the pins that we assign. The REXT match can be used to set the eight REXT pins to analog type. We can use a combination of... Using the datasheet as a reference, we need to assign a type for the remaining unmapped pins. We can use a combination of pin matches and the more specific right-click to assign types to the selection to finish the job. When we are assigning pin types, we can set the pin type filter to unassigned and enable it to show how many pins remain without a pin type. As pin types are assigned, the pins will disappear from the unassigned list. Remember that the list contains pins that match both the pin name match and the unassigned pin type match, so we need to clear the pin name match if we used it to assign pin types. It takes about 5 to 10 minutes to go through this, and I have sped up the video in this section so the whole process can be seen.
each pin type assignment we made, either using the assign type to matching pins, or the right click to directly assign the pin type to the selected pins, they get stored in the pin type override file, which defaults to the pin type override.txt. This file lives in the local working directory, so that the next time we read the pins, the pin types we assigned will be used. We could view this file and see that it's pretty simple. It contains all of the pin match equals type statements, and it can be directly edited in a text editor if desired. When Part Builder uses these overrides, it uses the longest matches first so that the most specific match gets applied to a pin. Once finished with the pin type assignments, we are ready to use SmartFrac to build the first pass symbol description language file for us. SmartFrac does that work most of us would do when we manipulate a pin spreadsheet and try to organize the pins by bus and pin name. It just does it much faster. It collapses whole buses and buses of diff pairs into one efficient pin match. It assigns inputs to the left, outputs to the right, and all the other pins it leaves for us to choose the side we want to place the pins on. On a part like this, SmartFrac will split the pins into two symbols, one for all the input, output, and in-out pins, and the other for all the power pins. In the status window, we see SmartFrac broke down the pin matches to 46 I.O. pin matches, which match 178 pins, and 7 power pin matches, which match 146 pins. The next step for the user is to reorganize the initial set file into sets of symbols they want to use with the SDL editor. It is helpful to figure out how we want to divide the parts into symbols before we start editing the SDL. So here we take a look at the final result. We create a symbol for the PCIe RX, TX, ref clock, reset, and in pins. One for the strapping and GPIO pins. One for the configuration and control type pins, along with the lane good and REXT pins. One for the power pins. And one for the ground, which is the VSS, VSS thermal, and the no connect pins. Now we start working with the SDL editor to organize the pin matches into the symbols that we want. First, let's save the SDL as it is and notice that Part Builder will prompt us to save it as a new file name. This is because the current file name is SDL from template.sdl, which it will overwrite every time we run SmartFrac. We can name the file whatever we want, so we name it pex8616.sdl. Let's work on the power and ground pins first. They are usually very easy to complete. First, we add a new symbol for ground slash no connect and move the VSS and NC pins to this symbol. Then we reorganize the remaining power pins, VDD10 on the left, VDD25 on the right, balance the sides, then move VDD10A on the left and VDD25 on the right.
Next, let's do the strap and GPIO pins because they're really easy. We'll use the search replace tools and we'll search for strap, select all, and we'll get all 20 strap entries. We'll cut them and we'll move them above the power pin symbol. Paste them. And then we'll search for GPIO. Select that, cut it, and move the GPIO down. So the GPIO is going to be on the right, and now we'll add a symbol start in front of those pins that we cut, and we'll name it strap underscore GPIO. and we'll put a symbol end marker down below it, which using the anchor. And now we'll look and we'll see the GPIO. We want the GPIO pins on the right, and then we're going to override the choose sides for the strap spare five, one, and six to put them all on. We want them all on the left, even the output that that is set to the right right now. We're going to put that on the left. And we're done with that symbol. Now we'll do the PCIe interface. We'll select a whole region and then we're going to control click to select the PCIe interrupt A pin, which is non-contiguous. We can cut that and then we'll paste it above the strap IO uh, symbol. pop them in there. Now we'll add a new symbol start right above the first pin. And we'll name it PCIe interface. And then we'll go to the bottom pin above it and we'll add a symbol end using the anchor. And now we'll fix the pins for the thing. So we're going to take the PCIe int and the reset pin and move them up to the top. Cut and paste is usually the easiest way to move things for a far way. And then we're going to take PCIe PERST, move it to the top left. We'll put a balanced symbol sides to separate those signals from the ref clocks. And then we'll put a, sp a spacer on the right in between the reset and the int A pin. Now we'll add a spacer between the ref clocks. And then we'll add a balanced symbol sides to separate the ref clock from the, the PCIe transmit and receive pins. And we'll have to move it down one to get it underneath the other ref clock. Now what we're going to do is we're going to split this bus. It's a 15 to 0. We're going to split it into two halves. So what we'll do is we'll copy the existing bus and we'll paste it and then we'll change the indexes. So we're going to change the first 15 to 0 to 15 to 8 and then we'll change the next 15 to 8 to 7 to 0. So now we have two halves of a bus and then we can insert a balanced symbol sides between that and we'll add two spaces between that just to separate them pretty well. And then we're done with that. And now we are left to organize the config pins. So we're going to put the config pins up on the right and we'll take a look at them. We're going to move the JTAG pins to the bottom. And then we'll move the JTAG TDO to the right, just up to the top of the, that group. I like my JTAG pins on the bottom. Then we're going to start looking at the EE pins. We're going to put them in the section above us. Now we're going to add a balance symbol sides to separate the JTAG pins from the rest of the part. We'll add a balance symbol sides to separate the EE pins from the rest of the part. And then we're going to cut the fatal error and put it up at the top. 
and we'll move the thermal, we'll put a balance symbol size between the thermal diode and the rest of the pins and reorganize this just to get it just right. The, So now we're going to put a balance symbol size between the I squared C buses and we'll put the I squared C buses on the right. And we'll see the I squared C is set up as a bus. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy it and we're going to break it into individual pieces so we can put the SDA0 interface and the SDA1 interface together. So I copied them and I got rid of the bus indexes and then I just break them up and put a spacer between the two of them. Now we're going to play with the REXT pins. And what we want is we want REXT A0 and B0 to be together so that we can put a resistor between them. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a loop around it. So we're going to use a 4i in 3 to 0 and, and N4. And then we're going to take the bus index. We'll put them on the left and we'll take the bus indexes and we'll get rid of the 3 to 0. We're going to put a spacer between the two of them. And we're going to get rid of the 3 to 0 and we're going to put a bang i or exclamation point i so it'll substitute the loop variable in. So now the first time through the loop it'll be 3, the next time through the loop it'll be 2, the next time through the loop it'll be 1. And then we'll save that. Now it's time to build the symbols. So we're going to use the green arrow, we'll hit the build symbols. It's going to warn us that the SDL file changed and we'll save it. And when we look at the status here, we're going to come up and it says error unknown match modifier choose side found there. So let's go find the choose side. We need to get rid of all choose sides in the SDL. So we find one and we're going to put that pin. We forgot to assign it to the right. So we'll save it. We'll hit the build symbols again and it'll run through and it's going to tell us all the status and it created all the symbols for us. Here we take a look at the symbols we created. In this pull-down selection, we can see that we created the five sig symbols, all signal pins, PCIe interface. We're going to open up the symbol browser. And here we can see the first config pins where we had the REXT pins, the lane good. Here is the PCIe receive pins and transmit pins. Here is the strap pins and the GPIO, 31 down to 0. Here's the VDDIO, the VDD25, the VDIO-A, and the VDD25-A, and then finally the ground symbol. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you were able to see the power of the CAD Enhanced Part Builder tool as it created five symbols for a 324 BGA in under 25 minutes while we were doing a lot of explaining. Please visit www.cadenhance.com slash free tool downloads to download the latest version of the tools. You can request a demo license to try it out yourself. You can download the set of files used to create this part with the copy part folder function from the choose button at the top right of the main GUI. From there, pick the copy template from Cadenhance, type PEX8616 in the match selection box, hit the find parts, and then select the PEX8616 Simple BGA template. Select a directory to use to copy it and download it. You will get the control file, the PEX8616 pinout CSV file that we created from the website, the pinoverride.txt file, and the PEX8616.sdl file. This will let you quickly create the part on your own. And now my dog Sadie would like to wrap this up.